I think, personally, we're in a classic period for some amazing mountain bikes, Rich. Yes, there are some absolute corkers out there, Neil. And what do you reckon, though, are the bangers for 2022? Well, let's get into it, Rich. These are the most desirable bikes of 2022, plus a couple of retro options. Ooh. Let's start off with one of the smaller brands, one of those cool boutique brands, Forbidden and their Druid. So this is a high pivot. Are we gonna see more high pivots on this list, Rich? Who knows? It's definitely on trend. But this is their 130 mil travel high pivot, like I said. It's got that uh, single pivot, but it's linkage driven. 150 mil uh, travel up front, sort of a low slung carb frame. I think these frames kind of forbidden as a whole. From some angles, they look kind of funky, a bit weird, yeah. but from others, they look absolutely banging. There's a few understated colors available for this uh, Druid, so I, I like to see it. Yeah, I bet that bike goes like an absolute rocket out on the trail. And obviously their Enduro team on the Dreadnought did very well last year. And they have a downhill team this year also riding a tweaked version of that Dreadnought. Yeah. So that kind of trickles down to the Druid. Yeah, very exciting bike, that. They're expanding into racing. I'd see that. They've got Conifer and Magnus Manson riding oh, that course, Dreadnought. Yeah. Okay, Neil, next up, a step away from trail bikes. We're going into downhill bike territory this time. Check this out, the Uno Ever. I think this bike always makes these lists for us every time. They are stunning. Limited to only 50 a year. Built, designed, you name it, all in Barcelona by Cesar Rojo. Cesar Rojo is actually, well, I know him from his downhill racing days because he was an old school, pro, old school pro like me in the early 2000s. He was super fast. I think yeah. he did get World Cup podiums. No way. Only thing I'm saying with this bike, it hasn't changed in a while. They mm. don't make them in very small amounts. They sell out. Yeah. It's still 27.5. It is, People yeah. still ride downhill, but I see actually on the Instagram they're developing an e-bike, so I'll be looking forward yes. to seeing that. And it'd be interesting to see if a newer version of the Ever downhill bike comes along. But yeah, as far as boutique brands go, I mean, that is fancy. Spendy as well. Ooh. Right then, Neil, the second trail bike on our list is the Canyon Spectral. 150 mil, 27.5 or 29. You've actually got one of these. I think Canyon smashed that apart with the sort of silhouette and the design, mm. the angles of this bike. I think it yeah. looks brilliant. I also think, well, they've they've introduced the same sort of silhouette to their torque. Yeah. Uh, also, their Spectral On is yes. looking the same. Yeah. Brilliant looking bikes. And also now, there's the 125. <sighs> yes, which I do have. And I'm very excited about riding that because it looks like a very capable bike. But I mean, this 150 mil version, you could smash park laps, you could smash big days out on it. I just think they've really hit the nail on the head with this one. Now we're going retro, but yes. I still think this is a desirable bike. I would love to have one even garage. The <sighs> yeah. Honda RN01. So this is from mid to late noughties. People like Greg Minard, yeah. Brendan Fairclough and Matty Lacoin and all, uh, well, Matty and Greg won races on this bike. It was pretty legendary at the time because it was sort of kept hidden. Did, Honda came to the races. No one had ever seen a Honda mountain bike in their life. Yeah. It was run by HRC, which is their top secret Honda program. Race Corp, I know. And at the end of every day, they would take the gearbox, because this is a gearbox bike, out of the frame yeah. and they'd be kept in separate places. So if they ever got stolen, which they did, one of the bikes got stolen. Oh, it did, didn't that. it? It never, did it show up? I can't remember. I don't think it did. Anyway, it was top secret. No one ever knew what was going on. They were never planning on selling the bike. It was just uh, really a lesson in uh, engineering yeah. for Honda engineers. Because Honda engineers move from thing to thing. The top ones move from Formula One to bikes yeah. to MotoGP. So it was one of those crazy exercises. And it was a pretty legendary bike. Yeah, it was kind of like the first time as well that sort of almost... F1 style pits and secrecy had come to mountain biking as well, wasn't it, really? And when we actually finally got to see what was inside the <laughs> box, it was basically a cassette and a rear mech. Just a mech and a box. But it was quite cool. Yeah, but there are still some in existence as well. Obviously, almost impossible to buy. Bernard's yeah. got one, isn't it? Well, yeah, word on the street was like all HRC things. At crushed. the end of the year, they were putting a crusher, literally a squash, but Greg Minard does have one in yeah. his shop, I believe, in yeah. South Africa. Yes. Sticking on the downhill bikes, Neil, and a bit of Greg Minard still as well, the Santa Cruz V10, possibly one of the most successful downhill bikes of all time. The original versions had 10 inches of travel, that's quite a lot of travel. Uh, modern day ones are around the eight inch mark. First company to go into 29 inch downhill bikes as well. That's right. Production. I yeah, they jumped on. I rode a mm. VPP uh, V10 for four years. Yeah, you did. Uh, and with not as much success as uh, people like Steve Pete, but I <laughs> loved it. Actually, at the time, I was a young flat pedal rider and the V10 was too much, too much travel for me, but the way they've tweaked that bike over the years yes. improved it. I do think that's one of the best looking downhill bikes on the circuit. Yeah, it is, it is pretty fancy, isn't it? It's, it's like you said, it's under Menard, Vergier, 
Tons of people, it's won tons of races. Yeah, uh, Laurie Green as well, looking pen nice. Oh, yeah. Yes. Next up for the cross country heads out there, I think this is one of the most sleek, uh, sort of integrated looking bikes, yes. the Trek Super Caliber. So if you look at it at first glance, you might think it's hard tail, yep. but you can see that shock underneath the top tube, or should I call it the ISO strut. No rear pivots in the rear triangle, so it all works off the layup of the, and, the, and the flex of the carbon fiber nice. to give 60 millimeters of travel, ridden by Yolanda Neff and Evie Richards to some amazing success and a great looking bike, I think. Yeah, this thing is an absolute race weapon, isn't it? 60 mil, kind of, a lot of XC bikes are actually going slightly longer travel, 100, 120 mil now. Yeah. But they've gone the other way with this race bike. And they've got, like, Yolanda Neff is basically the most technically skilled. Yeah, uh, Olympic champion. Yeah, so if that's the bike she's riding, then it's gonna work for most people. Evie Richards, world champion. So it's, it's race proven and it is pretty flipping desirable. Next up then, Neil, no full suspension bikes here. We're going, Away from the super expensive bikes, the Nuke Proof Scout Hardtail, the aggressive hardtail. Blake loves it, doesn't he? It's proven really popular with like a core of people mm. that love that bike. There's like an owner's group on, I guess I think it's on Facebook, on the internet think, somewhere. Yeah, there super is. Super passionate. Blake is a big part of that. Oh, he loves it. He's, I've seen him sign a few of these Nuke Proof Scouts, <laughs> and it is a brilliant all around hardtail. Yeah. It's kind of to the progressive end of stuff, but you can use it for anything. Blake has used it for lots of silly things. Did he race uh, Mega Avalanche on he it? He has done that. He's done all sorts of crazy things on that. And it's a brilliant hardtail bike. Yep, just goes to show that it doesn't have to be a really expensive Fancy Pants carbon bike to make the cut this year. Talking about Fancy Pants carbon uh, <gasps> lightweight bikes, the Orbea Alma. Yes. I've just had one of these. It's it, ridiculous. Like I said on the video that I shot this bike, I've got the fully rigid carbon <laughs> uh, fork 29er. It's the lightest bike I've ever ridden. And I've had some quite nice road bikes yeah. over my time. I've not weighed the thing, but talking about, you know, getting the most out of optimizing the carbon fiber frames forks. It's pretty crazy what this bike can do for the weight. Yeah, I mean, that's gotta be, I would put a guess, sub nine kilos. That's got and be. yours has got that crazy, funky gold paint job to it as well, like gold fleck, is it? Exactly, I was gonna get into this. Orbea do their uh, Mayo system where you can yeah. customize everything. This came like this, like uh, raw carbon. <gasps> it's not raw carbon, it's just like matte black with gold leaf on the front. That's cool, isn't it? It does look good. I love it. Next up, Neil, is the Starling Murmur. For all the steel is real fans out there, this thing is made from Reynolds 853 on the front triangle, and it's quite the beauty in it, proper booty. I was gonna say, uh, this is made just down the road from GMBN Towers, or Dirt Shed, should we say, down in <laughs> Bristol, so proper British steel brand. Yeah. Gotta love that, people love mm. steel bikes still. Yeah, Do 140 mil of travel, so this thing is a very capable trail bike. And just the attention to detail, the little starlings on it, you know, the welding, it's just an absolute thing of beauty. I really like these. Finishing off with what I would put in the brackets of one of the most bland bikes ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Desirable. Specialized Enduro. <laughs> I think this of the past was, I said this before, like a Labrador. Lovely, <laughs> Labradors are great, but then they're not like, what's the uh, most desirable dog? It's I, been upgraded to a Dalmatian. It, yeah, or a Golden Retriever, you know. <laughs> I think now the Specialized Enduro is a great looking bike. I love that frame there with the shock yes. sort of low slung. I know they've always been really good bikes and really capable bikes, but now for me, it's suddenly become a desirable bike. Definitely, and it's been, it's one of sort of the OG Enduro bikes, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I guess it you is. Know, and one of the first Enduro bikes to become a 29er as well. Yeah. Um, and, I, oh, go on. Well, for a while, 29ers looked rubbish. I, I know there's lots of good looking 29ers now, but this is a great looking 29er. Yeah, it's definitely come on a long way since its early days. All right, that's it. Well, one of my bikes has made it in there already, my all bare Alma. Rich, have you got one of your bikes that would make the most desirable list? Do you know, personally, I think actually, this is another all bare. It's my always, the full sus. And it's the one I recently rode for 24 hours. And you still like it? <laughs> it's a love-hate relationship. <laughs> <laughs> right, of course, this is subjective. This is what we've come up with. Uh, let us know your most desirable bikes Ooh. in the comments down below. And have we messed it up? Do you think some of these, <laughs> do you still think the Specialized Enduro is boring? I don't. Uh, let us know down below. Yeah. <laughs>